Let it be known that I got this scratch fighting jihadis and progressives at the same time, and with one hand tied behind my back no less. Also, you can see it so well because I got a new camera. With that, let's see who's been right all this time. Muslims or Christians? When Muslims challenge Christians, their biggest attack is to say that the Bible's been corrupted, that we're not reading the word of God and that's why we need the Quran. Most Christians just clam up at this point because either they don't read their Bible or they don't know the history or they haven't even read the Quran either. That's when Dawagandists like Zakir Naik, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa just swoop in and claim ultimate victory. But I have the luxury of a lot of time and research on my hand, not to mention, you know, the living God, so I'm not going to back down so easy. I'd love to throw tons of Bible verses and references at you. I could go into the ancient manuscripts, into textual criticism, and figure out what they say. I could also point to a lot of Christian and non-Christian ancient authors that show the awesomeness of biblical texts. But I understand something that a lot of Christians don't. The East and the West are very different in one very specific way. In the West, we view critical thinking, researching, and problem solving as our best tools to make good points. Usually the best prepared debater is going to come out on top. But in the East, honor is king. Doesn't matter how much research or problem solving you put into making a point. If you're the most passionate person, you're definitely going to come out on top. That's why we have a lot of debates over here in the West where someone from the West is debating someone from the East. And the person from the West does so much problem solving and research and they bring up so many references. But the person from the East just talks more passionately and raises their fist and says things very loudly and all of their followers just assume that they won. They might not even understand what he's saying, but, you know, he's passionate, so obviously he wins. You may have all the notes in the world to prove that the Bible walks circles around the Quran, but if an imam yells loud enough and is more passionate than you, all of his followers are going to holler and cheer and claim their verbal champion. So in order to reach the heart of the Muslims listening, to convict them like Jesus tells us to, I'm going to undermine that precious honor that you love by disproving the Quran with the Quran. This is where the fun begins. Muslims should be well acquainted with the references here, since you all have a very high view of God, as you should. About Allah. Surah 6 verse 115. None can change his words. Surah 10 verse 64. No change can there be in the words of Allah. Surah 6, verse 34. There is none that can alter the words and decrees of Allah. There are many more passages that say the same thing. Clearly, Allah is more honorable than anyone else. He is as honorable as can be, and his word is unchangeable. Easy peasy, no problems here. Again, Muslims, you'll be very familiar with some things here. You'll of course be familiar with the Old Testament prophets like Abraham, Isaac, Ishmael, Jacob, and Moses and you'll also be well acquainted with Jesus, or Isa, as you call him. Surah 2, verse 136. Say, O believers, we have believed in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the descendants and what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and we are Muslims in submission to him. Right there on the paper, the word of God includes what was given to Moses and to Jesus. This includes the Torah. Now, if you think you're going to start arguing with me here, hold on a second. Surah 29, verse 46. And do not argue with the people of the scripture, except in a way that is best, except for those who commit injustice among them, and say, We believe in that which has been revealed to us and revealed to you, and our God and your God is one, and we are Muslims in submission to him. Getting pretty bleak. Let's keep going. The Quran specifically addresses the Gospels, telling the Christians that they should judge by them in Surah 5.47. And let the people of the Gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. And whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, then it is those who are defiantly disobedient. Since this is in the time of Muhammad, it would only make sense that the Bible couldn't have been corrupted then. Why would Allah tell Christians to judge by a book that has been corrupted? He wouldn't certainly lie to us, would he? Allah is not immoral, Muslims say, and so you're forced to affirm that we're supposed to judge by the word of the gospel, because it's the word of God. I also can't help but put a little bit of textual criticism in there. 
We have some Bibles from the 7th century around the time of Muhammad, and we also have full Bibles from the 4th century. So that proves that it couldn't have been corrupted before Muhammad, and it certainly wasn't corrupted at his time. So now, of course, we know that the Bible isn't corrupted and is the Word of God according to the Quran. You can see where this is going, can't you? If the Bible is corrupted, as many of you say, then Islam is false because the Quran says that the Bible is uncorrupted and is the word of God, but that would mean that Allah couldn't protect his word from being corrupted. On the other hand, if the Bible is uncorrupted, then Islam is also false? Well, yes, because the Bible contradicts the Quran completely. Well, there you have it, nice and simple. Now, Muslims, you have a choice to make. Are you going to ignore what your own holy book says, or... Are you going to do the honorable thing and read the Gospels?